Often a fun effect can be making it look like there is graffiti in an image. Or if you find the right font, that someone has taken their finger and written their name in the sand. Those techniques require, one, a good selection of fonts, and two, knowledge of how blending works in layer styles. I'm going to start by hitting the letter T for the type tool, and we're going to make it look like Creative Cloud was graffitied over the Adobe logo. Before I start, I'll choose a color for the type. So I'll click on the black foreground color, and I'll choose a yellow. I tend to like the CMYK values, Solium Magenta Yellow and Black, so I'm just typing 0, hitting Tab to jump down and highlight, 0 again, 100, hitting Tab, 0 again. So I know it's 100% yellow. And I'm going to click once to put my cursor on the image. and I've typed Creative Cloud. I'm going to do a Select All, Select All, and I'll use my scrubby sliders to make the type larger. Now, as much as I know this says Creative Cloud, I have missed characters because you really can't proofread your own work. So I highly recommend, even if it's one or two words, running Edit, Check Spelling. I'm good today. <laughs> but Creative Cloud is in there, and I want to find a font that looks like handwriting. Now, my font library is going to be very different than yours, so you probably won't have this noteworthy typeface. You can choose one of the ones that ships with the Creative Suite. So your options there for fonts with the Creative Suite would probably be Brush Script. Brush Script is one of the core fonts that installs when you purchase the Creative Suite or Creative Cloud. That's not too shabby. So with Creative Cloud on my image, I'm going to size it up a little bit more and move it by not clicking the letters. That will deselect, but by moving it directly on the image. If I'd like to rotate it at all, I will go to my Move tool and choose Edit, Free Transform. And if I'm anywhere outside the letters, I can rotate. So I'm going to put this at an odd angle and make sure it stays in the bricks. There we have it. I'll double click to finish my free transform. And now I want to blend. Actually, before I blend, this space between the C and the R will keep me up tonight. So I'm going to grab my T tool, click between the C and the R, and bring up my character and paragraph panels. And I can tighten the tracking or the kerning. Tracking would be if the whole line is selected with three clicks. I'm going to first start with optical kerning, which gives me better, more even letter spacing. Then I'll click between the C and the R, and I'll tighten this by using a negative number. I can also hold down my Option key and hit my left arrow on my keyboard, or on Windows, Alt, left or right arrow. And I could do the same in Cloud so it looks like they're running together. All right, now I'm satisfied. Back to my Move tool. On the Move tool, I will use FX for effects, but I'm only going to go to Blending Options. And in Blending Options, it's difficult for me to scoot this where I can see the whole piece of type, but I really just need to see this underlying layer. In Blending Options, as you pull Underlying Layer right, it will start to disappear when it reaches a certain color layer. In this case, somewhere around 38. And as I go further right, more colors will drop away, picking up the tones and contrast of the bricks. Now here's the power user trick. If you hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows, and I grab the left side of this little triangle, I can split them apart. Once they're apart, it varies the opacity, making it look like the spray paint is really leaking into the mortar in the bricks.
but the edges are still a little bit hard for my taste. It looks like I've added a type in Photoshop. So to make the edges look more realistic, I'm actually going to cheat with Drop Shadow. I'll click the Words Drop Shadow, and that will highlight the settings. And then I'm going to choose Normal Blending, 100% Opacity, and you'll see a big gray shadow that's applied. But if I click on the black, I can choose my 100% yellow. So I'm typing 0 for cyan, 0 for magenta, 100 for yellow, 0 for black. And I've got yellow on yellow. But let's make the distance 0 so it's directly behind. And now if you play with spread and size, it creates a soft fuzzy edge looking a little bit more like somebody spray painted that there. And I could finish it off by doing Edit, Free Transform, and rotating it a little bit more where I'm happy. When I pull it over other areas, like the white, I can clearly see the C in Creative Cloud. So that might be better to leave a portion of it in white so it's more readable because yellow on yellow will be a little tricky. I could also lighten the opacity so it's not so solid overall to make it look a little weather-worn. And then to finish this off, I might want to add a little perspective. If there's perspective in the shot, I can hit T to go back to my Type Tool and use the Warp Type features. In Warp Text, I can choose any of these, but I'll just choose the Arc. And it gives it a bend, which I don't want, but might be fun. I'll make the bend 0, and I can get perspective by adjusting the horizontal distortion. There we go. A little bit of perspective. Or if it were to scale vertically, I could add a little vertical distortion. But that's not what I want for this one, so I'll just do a little horizontal perspective, making it a little larger at this end and a little smaller at that end where the vanishing point is, where I'm at an angle, the A is closest to the camera, the E fades off a little bit. And I'm just going to do a small amount, but now you've seen how to add type to an image and make it look like it was originally there. The tricks we used were layer styles with blending options that split apart using Option or Alt, and a drop shadow, the same color as the type, but no distance to create a softer edge so it's not too crisp and sharp looking like computer-generated type. One of my favorite things to show, and that blending option trick, I know people who have used Photoshop for years who haven't seen that, so tell a friend.